This is the place to find yourself. Istanbul offers great universities and the lifestyle is really amazing here. So I live at the dorms at Maltepe University and I'm really happy with it. There's a cleaning service every few days and then there's the library nearby which is open 24-7. My first impression when I came was like, it's huge. You have everything in one uh, place. When you first come to multiple university, you don't know where what is and you're like, oh my God, I need help. Guess what? You're not alone. There is the international office people over there. They're like family. They're very helpful and they're always there for you. Istanbul is the perfect mixture between ancient and modern. Coming into this city helps me discover myself, learn about so many different cultures, learning about the world, which will help me in writing future books. At Maltepe University, we have a lot of research centers. Because of that, we have the ability to participate in a lot of international projects. Here at Maltepe University, the education consists of both practical and theoretical. We get the opportunity to practice everything we learn in class in real life. So after we graduate, we have a degree and we can work all over the world. People come to Istanbul all the time, but what they really miss when they visit are the antique shops, which contain a thousands of years of memories and also a thread of the modern future. I like to use every minute and just get out and hop on the ferry and just um, go from the Asian side to the European side and just enjoy the wonderful weather with the wonderful Bosphorus behind me and just enjoying the moment of Istanbul. Istanbul is uh, very beautiful, with great culture. This city is the symbol of diversity. Come and study at Maltepe University. Come here and feel like you're home. Hello everyone, my name is Esra. I am the moderator for this session and welcome to the third session of the last day of our Congress. If you have a question, you can send them in the comment section. We start today with our first presenter, Kushi Tong, who is going to talk about origami, the new revelation in space. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Kushi Tong from NMIMS School of Design. Today, I'm here to present my white paper on the topic origami, the new revolution in space. It is rightly said that inspiration can come from anywhere and from anything. In fact, human beings have mastered the art of converting tiny ideas or mimicking small objects to make extraordinary transformations that fills us with wonder. Today, I'm going to talk about one such transformation. I'm sure Everybody present, uh, I'm sure everyone present here might have spent at least a little time of their childhood folding paper, making cranes, paper boats, or airplanes. Yeah, uh, we also have some, we also have spent some beautiful childhood memories attached with it. It might sound astonishing that this childhood activity of playing with those small sheets of paper called origami is now paving its way to revolutionize the world. Yes, origami is actually spreading its tentacles in almost every field. Be it biomedical industry, design industry, architecture or the fashion world. It is also being used in various robotic surgeries as well as for making military equipments. Scientists have now discovered its endless potential in space research. The future of origami is insanely huge. My white paper serves the purpose of discussing the problems being faced by the space scientists in the how origami is proving to be a novel method to solve these hindrances, its limitations and also its future. So I would first like to discuss the major problems being faced by space scientists and the researchers. Almost all of us have watched at least a few sci-fi movies with a vision of a futuristic world with mind-boggling developments in space technologies. Some directors and writers have imagined life on different solar systems. Um, however, there are numerous hindrances being faced in their way. One such hindrance is the exoplanet exploration. 
Since a long period of time, exploring what is there beyond the solar system has been the heartthrob of many scientists and researchers. But the exploration of these exoplanets is a real challenge because of the fact that these planets orbit around the stars that are a million times brighter. Hence, whenever any satellite tries to image them, all the details get washed out due to the extreme brightness of the shining stars. Currently, astronomers detect exoplanets using a shadow technique called transit method, but it is not efficient enough to properly image the planets and search traces for life there. Another problem is the deployment of large space structures like huge antennas, telescopes, cameras, and massive reflective surfaces. There is a need for new and appropriate commercial solutions to deploy them with lightweight technologies that have increased packing efficiency without compromising the quality of reflectors. Meeting the necessity of future applications like satellite solar power is another burning problem as the deployment of massive size of such structures with kilometers of length is extremely difficult. The third problem is the propulsion system's performance. The space travels are restricted to either short trips for enormous amount of cargo or small efficient satellites for longer duration missions due to the inability to effectively manage the fuel. The fourth problem is the exploration and habitation mission in Mars and Moon. The undulating surface of Moon and Mars full of cracks and crevices makes it difficult for the robot to access their environment. For the habitation mission, there are numerous constraints that have to be dealt with. Scientists have to build a surface that is small enough to be carried in rockets, but also large enough to accommodate human beings inside. The structure also needs to be lightweight with a tough material that can survive in extreme climates. Solutions. Origami has surprisingly solved most of these problems. The magical folds of origami have made almost everything possible, be it folding antennas, packing satellites, exploring life on exoplanets, or making habitation for Mars. For the exploration of exoplanets, researchers and designers have come up with this immense structure called the star shade. As you can see in the first picture, this invention can be compactly launched in the satellite and as soon as it gets into space, it unfolds into this gigantic flower-like shape with a size as huge as a baseball diamond, thus preventing starlight from reaching the telescopic mirror. The flower-shaped petals of star shade effectively creates a softer edge that causes less bending of the light waves. Another major invention is this origami antenna, which solves two major problems at the same time. One is that it can fit inside small briefcase side satellites called CubeSats. Another is that once it is deployed, it keeps on changing its profile and performances. This enables better performance of its basic function of transmitting and receiving signals. It also helps the antennas to shift between being omnidirectional and unidirectional. Another major invention is the new shape-shifting radiator by NASA technologist Vivek Dvedi. He created history by being the first person to combine two variable different emissivity devices into one structure by using origami, thereby inventing a smart shape-shifting radiator that removes or radiates heats on small satellites. The radiator folds and unfolds easily using origami and forms grooves and cavities, which increases the absorption and affects the heat loss. has been solved by using origami uh, by the invention of foldable plastic fuel bladder. This bladder can efficiently store and pump fuel without cracking even at super cold temperatures. The folds made with complex origami mechanisms spreads out the stress on the material, making it less likely to tear. The researchers successfully tested the capacity of the bladder by using liquefied nitrogen at a temperature of 77 Kelvin. The bladder could be stupendously squeezed at least 100 times without any leakages or breaks under super cold temperature. Now, this is a very interesting inven in invention. This is an origami inspired pop up flat robot named Puffer. It has a body that can fold itself flat, roll, un roll under small spaces, and fit inside cracks and crevices. Several microbots of Puffer can flick out, flatten like cards pop up and stack on top of one another to investigate the rocky terrains. 
snowy surface, sand dunes, steep slopes, caves, and craters. As you can see in this picture, this is how the habitat of Mars and Moon looks like. These flexible origami tents are made from highly resilient material that can be folded and unfolded over and over again. The structure has angled facets, protecting it from the risk of meteoroid damage. The built-in solar panels of this shape-shifting tent follows the sun throughout the day for maximum energy absorption. The outstanding tents are reusable, which, re which restricts the amount of space junk and their multiple panels enable them to be reinvented for every new space expenditure. Although the marvels of origami have proved to be a miraculous boom for the space scientist, but it comes with a big limitation. Generally, a simple sheet is used to make folds, which makes all the units highly interdependent. The option of changing one feature without disturbing others gets ruled out. This limitation forces the scientists and researchers to keep their model as simple as possible. Complexity cannot be put up in the model because every piece of complexity added or hardware added ends up increasing the potential of its failure. Despite of its limitation, origami has the perfect amalgamation of art, science and engineering. These are closely interwoven in every work of origami and when put together perfectly, we can actually create wonders and marvels for the future. The white paper also discusses some of the unexplored paths in origami. Presently, it is being used to tailor the materials that lie flat, but it can have a much vaster application for the surface which have more drama, like a parabolic or spherical surface. If we run our imaginations further, we can even try to obtain some interesting combinations using the doubly curved surfaces and folding them. We have just gathered a few pearls from the ocean of origami. It has a plethora of opportunities. We need to swim deeper and deeper to explore more and inject hope and inject hopes into the dream of making the outer world accessible for everyone. Thank you. I would like to thank you, Kushi, for your presentation and participating in our Congress. Thank you so much. Thank you again. And now we will continue our session with our next presenters. Arush Mehra, Palak Goyer, Samiksha Sashdeva will talk about smart assistance for electrical appliances for the visually impaired. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hope you are all doing well in these tough times. I'm Arushi, and my teammates Palak and Samiksha will be joining me today. We are from the NMIMS School of Design, India, and will be talking about our paper on sensory aid for the visually impaired. Globally, it has been est uh, est estimated that approximately 1.3 billion people have some form of vision impairment, out of which 36 million people are blind. They face a number of challenges that cause hindrances in, way in, in the way of they live, and this is because of the negligence, lack of inclusivity, and social barriers created by the people around them. During the past few years, there has been growing awareness and major shift in the attitudes towards blindness, but the exclusion from society is witnessed in many spheres and difficulties they face are still often neglected. Technology is another area where visually impaired face issues. The use of assistive technology is 77% in the total population of elderly and the visually impaired. However, the most common category of these devices is in the population was connected with mobility devices and few to aid their daily tasks. Thus, this study focuses on understanding the challenges of the visually impaired to provide solutions that help them gain a sense of self-reliance and accomplishment while performing their daily day-to-day -day activities at home. To do so, this study aims at developing an assistive technology that makes the use of electrical appliances easier and is universal in nature. 
this technology will not only make them feel that they are any different and will will not make them feel any different from the sighted individuals and make them feel included by doing so this process is broadly divided in three phases research of the collection research and collection of data synthesis of the data collected ideation and conceptualization to get solutions and the validation by conducting usability testing the interviews initially started off with a wider target audience that is the visually impaired people living in industrial homes studying in blind schools or others with visual impairment people who have daily interactions with them were also interviewed namely their family members teachers in blind schools helpers in blind homes and people that run the jobs that they work in around 40 individuals from all age groups were interviewed The research helped understand how the visually impaired people not only required physical accessibility but also access to information and spaces. Though most Indian visually impaired adults were ad adapted to using mobile phones due to the inbuilt talkback software, it was not accepted by few due to the absence of talkback features in re regional languages. Most of the aids available for visually impaired people are focused on one particular product which in turn adds effort while purchasing different small small products to help in making other products easy and accessible as well causing them a lot of difficulty over to pala make sure yeah yeah so with the focus on household appliances such as microwaves and washing machines the main problems observed related to understanding the location as well as the function of the buttons on the control panel since most of these products have flat buttons with no tactile feedback available to help differentiate between them since the use of amazon alexa significantly reduces the effort in performing tasks the combination of this technology with other appliances such as microwaves could further ease their lives by reducing the learning curve the proposed solution thus included a panel with a pressure sensor which will be attached to the control panel of the appliance and connected via alexa or other talkback software on the user's phone for this a back end application will need to be downloaded on the user's phone which stores the data regarding the list of applications within the home as well as the configuration with these applications that is the location and function of the different buttons on the application the setup would be done by a service center official to reduce the efforts for the visually impaired user on receiving commands from the mobile application regarding the task to be performed it would apply pressure to that particular scanned area of the panel and press the button for the user further the voice recognition and talkback features would effectively give the user a feedback regarding the task that has been performed in the form of voice as well as haptic feedback for this solution we created a low fidelity paper prototype out of cardboard which in order to help us analyze the different options as well as the different variations these included the panels with small and larger grids along with consideration to the three dimensional lots in order to understand the impact of the solution the user test was done with three visually impaired working adults Initially, a protocol and expectancy test were prepared. Post which, they were given two tasks, which are the user is first alone at home and needs to eat dinner, which is cold, and thus needs to heat the food in the microwave using the voice-based smart panel. Secondly, the user needs to cook a bowl of rice at home, and the gas and is currently not working, thus needs to use the smart panel to cook the food. Each participant was asked a set of questions at the end for an overall feedback of the product. the comments made by each participant were analyzed and according to that the feedback was taken and the conclusions were drawn now over to pala i'm sorry pala you are on mute actually okay okay Uh, am I audible now? Hello. 
Hello. Yes, Bala, continue. Yes, you are. Okay. So uh, the user test gave us a lot of insights uh, with respect to what was working in the product and what the users felt as a hindrance. So according to the users, the voice interface was easy and convenient to use. And it was a good thing to have the integration of the product within the appliance so that th they don't have to purchase a new one. And along with that, uh, what did not work was that the user did not, uh, the user expected to perform the action on the microwave itself instead of the mobile phone. So they expected more interaction with the product. And um, it was also expected that the, um, that there would be a tactile feedback and the too many steps to complete the task uh, uh, acted as a hindrance and puzzled the users and increased the user code. Uh, all in all, uh, on an average, it was a 4.6 out of 10 rating by the users. Um, based on those insights and their recommendations, uh, we made an entire journey um, so, uh, a little simpler for the user. So instead of giving commands in the phone, the user can now directly give the uh, voice command to the panel, which then pushes the respective button directly. In addition to that, the uh, buttons and the features that are used on a daily basis by the user were uh, only kept um, uh, like the on and off button, the preset features uh, that they use on a daily basis. The panel was also made tactile so that the user can sense it through the touch as well. Um, so this is our final uh, 3D model uh, where the panel will be attached on top of the electronic device and attached to the power source. Um, so coming to the technology that will be used, each uh, pixel in the panel will consist of one linear actuator, uh, which will, on the trigger of the voice command by the user, will move forward and press the respective button on the microwave. Um, this is done by converting the rotational motion of the servo motor uh, present over here uh, into a linear motion through the gear and the rack um, in, uh, so that the uh, button is pressed correctly. Um, this solution will highly impact the visually impaired audience since it can, can, can be used in any model of the electronic appliance and requires low effort and is easy to use because of the presence of a voice interface. It can also be used in public spaces as a universal product for everyone, like, like in electronic appliances like coffee makers, uh, ATM machines, printers, etc. Um, coming to the implementation of this product, we plan on collaborating with existing electrical appliances brands like Panasonic, for example, so that can, it can be easily mass produced. It will also be distributed in large quantities to the blind homes and support organizations to reach the maximum users. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank you, Anisha. Arush, I'm sorry, Arushi, for their presentation and participating in our congress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. And now we will continue our session with will with next presenter, Berkit Berkit Tirle Segura will talk about the industrial designer, his profile and his relationship with reality. Hello. Hello. One moment, please. No, 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 no. Is there a question of 14 and then this is a little bit? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, it's okay. You can go on. Okay. Hello. Uh, good evening. My name is Belki Segura. And thank you for being able to participate in this Congress. For me, it's gratifying to be able to make now another position for industrial uh, into abstract and materialize in the design in Colombia. In the perspective, industrial design is formulate and the resource of research and the search to power structure the program in the university from this. The position I took was that the professional and the relationship, why, uh, why they reality in young industrial design articles. So to give a perspective on the, uh, on the able inclusion of industrial designers in same way provide reflection on the range 
or mm -hmm. transform existing. And in the, it is articulated in the reflection that demonstrates the breadth of the discipline of uh, mm -hmm. doing, doing and the discipline in activities of ghosts having the projectual capacity of innovation and strategy from this rise is possible that industrial designers will be um, reconfigure skills and profile to adapt to new labor demands. So sorry, removes a structural, cultural, political labor aspect. Um, the position is talk was that of the professional profile and the relationship way the the reality of young industrial designer article so to give a, a perspective one labor inclusion for industrial designers in the same way provide an relay action program and the system from this academy for future designers in their competence uh, as professional industrial design is some that were by recognized promoting action but that demonstrate development of the stranger activities and the position of industrial designs why they help design programs that a uh, strength and demonstrate in inclusion formats of design and is is given the design inclusion the required asset that are reflect with respect to universities in Colombia are that they do know prepare the graduates to act in the rivalry world becomes a concert about employing inclusion of the designs, but so for this, you promote design and innovation design being essential and discipline. In the development process is transdisciplinary. Industrial design is the bridge of the design decor to projectual of and um, professional industrial design it is sound that work be recurrent promoting action but demonstrate in development uh of stranger activities don't the and sorry down the position if the industrial design why help to of design programs and the stranger and demonstrate in action of from I see promotion of this one. Um, is, it is article to Mexican industrial designers, Gonzalez Moreno, here where, where high dresses the position what the industrial design determined and the relationship to industrial designers were exercised in Findo that it's possible to see that in Colombia company do no work together from this perspective, the hiring of the industrial designer is it does not recognize the process or analysis and the matching of launch number of the variable to sell a expected but generating a solution optimal for given environment and one one del union the unit gratuitely uh, this designer needs mm -hmm. and the area of special to be able to perform quickly in the company in competing uh, giving mm -hmm. the professional practice of the designers is a subject to deep productive reality of the country that academy in down it competencies and skills that for new gun in design, but provatic sector in this one that I give recommend on linking 
for the industrial designers, the process that affect the industrial in Colombia day, affecting industrial designers is the free world. The Colombian economy, economy has been going through a part of industrial in, increasing uh, decentralization, but to as one of the growing of the industrial production. The ground decline in the shaver industrial table in secular decline, employing industrial but uh, a production process that is or neutral after where dying industrial disperse that favor industrial design find new that this position does not meet the industrial design must ignore the meets from which the comes is the giving free work in being able to formalize industrial designs is elements and service in provides where a service is provides there as the competent technic techno technical mm -hmm. uh, cultural social uh, development an opportunity for the position of industrial design has been worried most but comforted considered in the profession practice and the process process of the design intervention in society hmm. sorry um company but provide for growth condition contract the service the life work but the project of the mm -hmm. demons in the first mm -hmm. independent professional very permanent according to explanation of Panton design and the inter new relationship with business business wow. wide uh, developed by professional process adapting industrial designs is the company is intrinsic is the quality not not good when really mm -hmm. relationship designer is um in the in the sign sit way do jade um so um Sorry, excuse me. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, this uh, it's and all speak, fine. you can speak in English. So, so and um, and um, sorry. Calm down. It's all fine. Good luck. <laughs> um, various importance affect the position of position industrialists in Colombia and a. Uh, Incluso no movió las diapositivas. Um, the formula prospective if industrial design in Colombia is result of the research of the industrial program and the autonomous University of Colombia. Kukev is current plan the before. I hope to find service of Parliaments that are stone and the categories in consolidated methodology and the adapting in types the same programs, especially industrial design programs. Uh, industrial design and the finish. Um, its create activity due purpose is to study these multi-phase qualities, adaptive project service and the race system to do their life circle before design is the main factor they know as humanists of the tech journalists in the critical factor culture and economic change. Uh, industrial uh, design industrial Colombia. Uh, the professional industrial uh, division in Colombia programs, problem, classification, dating, straight, and the uh, uh, structure of the occupation industrial design in Colombia. And the 
practical project and design is fundamental role in the industrial design is as I met article detergently and athletes. And conclusion is directing why age of this space for these designers is trained so be articulate why greater reconnect of the others uh, industrial something generate why we can depot specific link no to one but several position tax which they perform and um, create the asiners that are present at the time big and the design are the ability to graph communication but no conceptual in design process the wish analyze evaluate and process all the influence and the social economic or political situation and affect the country they are related to design but they may be an increase in, in design intervention in society e the ability to design why elements of the their one solution um the white qualities of design in academia solo uh, just the methodologies in and the mrd work Frank de Boer, where the next professional a uh, young artist uh, defines the justification of industrial designs in the performance of research or the company of our insertion the economic growth of nation and the prestige and the education institutions thank you i'm sorry and um, speaking english it was okay don't worry thank you again okay thank you thank you <laughs> And now we will continue our session with our next presenter, Niki Matsuki. We'll talk about emission of metals from tobacco products. Hello, everybody. Hello. Just a moment. Can you see the screen? It's okay? Yes, we can see it. Continue. Uh, my name is Niki Matsuki and I'm from the Hellenic Open University. Uh, this uh, job I'm going to present is a uh, part of my PhD, which has a uh, both theoretical and uh, experimental session. Uh, this is the theoretical part. The title is Emission of Metals from Tobacco Products. As uh, everybody knows, smoking is one of the main causes of avoidable and premature deaths in the world. It is estimated that more than 7 million people are killed annually due to smoking, and the impression is that uh, a significant number of them are not smokers, but are uh, just exposed, exposed to sidestream smoke, either at work or at home. So, scientists have been trying to manufacture novel products, tobacco products, that uh, emit uh, less uh, toxic chemicals. Uh, during the last year, several novel tobacco products were introduced in the market as less harmful alternatives compared to traditional cigarettes. Two of them are electronic cigarettes and heated tobacco products. Electronic cigarettes were initially developed in China around 2003 and introduced in the U.S. market uh, around 2006, the beginning of 2007. As you can see in the figure, it's a device that uh, is composed of three main parts. A cartridge or tank where the liquid is uh, placed. We call this e-liquid. A heating element or atomizer and a battery. 
when the user presses a button or just inhales, then the liquid is heated and an aerosol is produced, which is inhaled from the user through a mouthpiece. The liquid solution consists from glycerol, propylene glycol, nicotine and flavorings. There are hundreds of flavorings in the market and unfortunately we do not have toxicological data of uh, all the products produced from the flavorings upon their heating. Heat tobacco products were, introduced, were also recently introduced in the market under the name Icos from the company Philip Morris and since then several other products were launched such as Glow or iFuse. As you can see, it's like that. It uh, also consists of three main parts, a holder, a charger and the resistance that heats tobacco sticks. The sticks are composed from reconstituted tobacco with nicotine and flavorings. Again, we can see the presence of flavorings. Heating temperature of the sticks is uh, up to 350 degrees Celsius degrees, which is uh, much lower than the temperature of a conventional tobacco cigarette. Sorry. These novel tobacco products are considered healthier alternatives compared to conventional cigarettes. But is it really true? Healthier means that uh, somebody does not necessarily have to quit smoking because it's a habit that, that does not uh, harm his uh, health. However, no data about uh, long-term use of these products is, uh, does exist for the moment. And uh, also toxic chemicals were detected in the emissions or the aerosols of these products. Uh, we also know that the chemicals concentration depends significantly on the smoking regime. And uh, since human puffing behavior is not standard, somebody can inhale uh, higher or lower quantities of the toxic chemicals produced according to his uh, smoking habits. Our uh, work was an extended bibliographic research of tobacco products emissions. For this reason, in order to collect our data, uh, we searched all the, the articles published in Scopus and PubMed databases from 2010 until 2020. We examined only the papers in English uh, in order to perform the searches, uh, we used uh, specific keywords, which were of course different for each uh, type of tobacco product. So actually we performed the search three different times. Then the duplicates among the two databases, Scopus and PubMed, were eliminated. We also included in our analysis publications from references of the initial articles. And uh, then uh, only the papers dealing with metals emissions were extracted. Here we have a result uh, tables, table. We have the three rows, one for conventional tobacco cigarettes, one for electronic cigarettes, and one for heated tobacco products. In the first line, we have the articles found in Scopus, then the articles found uh, in PubMed, then the unique articles after the elimination of the duplicates between the two different databases. We can see, of course, that there are much more articles for conventional tobacco cigarettes than for the new products. Uh, here are the articles dealing only with emissions, not only metal emissions, but also gas emissions and particle, particulate emissions. And uh, in the final line, we have the articles dealing with metal emissions. There are 75 for tobacco cigarettes, 31 for e-cigarettes, and only 18 for heated tobacco products. The different metals detected were 70 for tobacco cigarettes, 60 for e-cigarettes, so we can see that there's not so much of a difference, and 34 for the heating heated tobacco products. Uh, here in the table are presented the five most commonly analyzed metals 
which are cadmium, lead, chromium, nickel, and arsenic, both for tobacco cigarettes and heated tobacco products. And uh, for electronic cigarettes, the only difference is that uh, among the five most analyzed metals is copper instead of arsenic. We can see that we know that all these metals are heavy metals and uh, toxic. Uh, here in the table are also presented the maximum concentration reported from these metals in the tobacco products emissions. The quantities are in nanogram per cigarette or per, per item for tobacco cigarettes and heated tobacco products and in nanogram per 12 puffs for electronic cigarettes since we consider that 12 puff, puffs is about one cigarette. It is obvious that the metal concentration is lower for the new tobacco products than for the conventional cigarettes. However, they still exist. And uh, for example, in the case of lead, it's 63.7 nanograms per cigarette in conventional tobacco cigarettes and 42.9 for heated tobacco products they are not so significantly lower. So, our extended bibliographic set showed very significant variations for all the metals concentration and all the tobacco products. It's worth to be mentioned that the minimum concentration reported was always below detection limit for all the products. Uh, due to these variations, legislation requires that the emissions have to be calculated under specific experimental conditions. Smoking machines have to be used and the parameters such as puffing volume, puffing duration, puffing interval are set according to specific smoking protocols. The most commonly used is ISO or Canadian protocol which is more intense than ISO and uh, in every case, we saw that when Canadian uh, smoking protocol was used, the uh, emissions concentrations were higher. So, we concluded that the number of metals we detected was generally lower in electronic cigarettes and even, even lower in heated tobacco products emissions in comparison to conventional cigarettes. The same trend was observed for their concentration. Wide variations were recorded for all the concentrations and these variations depend on the smoke production method, usually smoking machine, but also we found some different methods, the smoking protocol, as we discussed previously, the collection method and also the analytical method. Under specific experimental conditions, no metals are detected in the emissions of any tobacco products. So, we believe that further studies need to be performed in order to prove novel tobacco products' safety. In this point, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank you, Nikki, for your presentation and participating in our Congress. Thank you again. And now we will continue our session with our last presenters. Dario Pavon, Alejandro Labrada, Luis Antonio Salinas, Jose Carlos Nieto will, will talk about developing from home the struggles of students in an international cooperation project. Hello. Hello. Is everything okay? Okay. Um, we apologize for the inconvenience. We were having some uh, connection issues. Uh, well, let's get started. Uh, you should be sharing our presentation right now. All right. So, uh, we're going to have a brief introduction of our project and uh, the whole. Uh, the whole, the whole project we're developing and the work we're going to be presenting for you today. Uh, we have, I have with me um, several of my teammates, uh, Alejandro Escobar. 
is our 3D artist and uh, Luis, who is our concept artist. So, uh, brief introduction, please. Uh, next slide, please. We have uh, a project which is basically a game for. for I am there you are. I'm sorry we are having trouble to hearing you. I think you have some network issues. We'll continue huh? yeah Hi. well <laughs> basically basically uh, quick point in case we leave again uh, unexpectedly. the quick point we want to make is we are having uh, great struggles with our internet connection and our access to resources. In, in, able, uh, in order to be able to work online and to communicate Okay. Uh, yeah, this is kind of glitchy. Um, it's a this is the place to find yourself. Istanbul offers great universities, and the lifestyle is really amazing here. So I live at the dorms at Maltepe University and I'm really happy with it. There's a cleaning service every few days and then there's the library nearby which is open 24-7. My first impression when I came was like, it's huge. You have everything in one uh, place. When you first come to Maltepe University, you don't know where what is and you're like, oh my God, I need help. Guess what? You're not alone. There is the international office people over there. They're like family. They're very helpful and they're always there for you. Istanbul is the perfect mixture between ancient and modern. Coming into this city helps me discover myself, learn about so many different cultures, learning about the world, which will help me in writing future books. At Maltepe University, we have a lot of research centers. Because of that, we have the ability to participate in a lot of international projects. Here at Maltepe University, the education consists of both practical and theoretical. We get the opportunity to practice everything we learn in class in real life. So after we graduate, we have a degree and we can work all over the world. People come to Istanbul all the time. But what they really miss when they visit are the antique shops, which contain thousands of years of memories and also a thread of the modern future. I like to use every minute and just get out and hop on the ferry and just um, go from the Asian side to the European side and just enjoy the wonderful weather with the wonderful bus for us behind me and just enjoying the moment of Istanbul. Istanbul is a very beautiful, with great culture. This city is the symbol of diversity. Come and study at Maltepe University. Come here and feel like you're home. Well, um, as I was saying, the video game is based on uh, agriculture management with a very strong uh, approach to simulation of, I'm um, sorry, we're having some background issues here. Uh, in simulation with real data we're gathering for web, uh, from web services provided by uh, government, uh, either companies or organizations, that manage uh, soil and uh, weather and everything related to agriculture management. So the
I think there was a technical problem. Thank you again. Our Engineering and Architecture Congress has ended this year. See you next year. Take care of yourselves. The congresses of our other faculties continue in the coming weeks. Thank you to everyone for joining us for their interest in our congress. Congress. I want to especially thank multiple university family, to our rector Shahin Karasar, to vice rector Betül Çotuk Söken, to our instructors Emre Atlayar Olca, Ebru Nadide Yazar and Selim Güllülü. Also to our friends who took part in the organization. Thank you so much. Microfone. Não me tanto hoje. See you next year, guys. See you next year. See you next year. This is the place to find yourself. Istanbul offers great universities and the lifestyle is really amazing here. So I live at the dorms at Maltepe University and I'm really happy with it. There's a cleaning service every few days and then there's the library nearby which is open 24-7. My first impression when I came was like, it's huge. We have everything in one uh, place. When you first come to multiple university, you don't know where what is and you're like, oh my God, I need help. Guess what? You're not alone. There is the international office people over there. They're like family. They're very helpful and they're always there for you. Istanbul is the perfect mixture between ancient and modern. Coming into this city helps me discover myself, learn about so many different cultures, learning about the world, which will help me in writing future books. At Maltepe University, we have a lot of research centers. Because of that, we have the ability to participate in a lot of international projects. Here at Maltepe University, the education consists of both practical and theoretical. We get the opportunity to practice everything we learn in class in real life. So after we graduate, we have a degree and we can work all over the world. People come to Istanbul all the time, but what they really miss when they visit are the antique shops, which contain a thousands of years of memories and also a thread of the modern future. I like to use every minute and just get out and hop on the ferry and just um, go from the Asian side to the European side and just enjoy the wonderful weather with the wonderful bus for us behind me and just enjoying the moment of Istanbul. Istanbul is uh, very beautiful, with great culture. This city is the symbol of diversity. Come and study at Maltepe University. Come here and feel like you're home.